welcome back. Uh, so, in uh, uh, last two lectures, we have been discussing about uh, uh, the electromagnetic spectrum and uh, we also talked about the earth energy balance and budget and mostly uh, this was uh, been discussed because this plays an important role in uh, in terms of the uh, the data which we we are interested in collecting in form of the reflectance of light okay. now different material will have different uh, reflectance and different reflected reflectance curve or we can say spectral curves and these are the few sensors which we discussed at the last which are most commonly used SLAR which is uh, side looking airborne radar and lidar is your light detection and ranging. Now, coming to the uh, fundamental principle it is remote sensing as we have been discussing that different material will have different spectral curves, because some of uh, in some of the bands uh, the material or the object on the earth surface will not reflect any light. Okay. The, the the energy which has been radiated or incident on that object will be absorbed. So, the basic principle involved in remote sensing methods is that in a wide range of it is in, in a wide range of electromagnetic spectrum, but different wavelengths. Okay. So, we were talking about the, uh, the wavelengths which is covering right from the gamma ray and goes up to the infrared and all that. Okay. So, this wide range of electromagnetic spectrum with different wavelengths, different objects reflects or emits a certain intensity of light. So, part of it will be absorbed and part of it will be reflected and that is dependent on basically the physical composition, surface texture, color, moisture content etcetera. So, for example, if you are looking at uh, uh, the the, uh, the body um, uh, on the earth surface which is containing water okay, then the reflectance will be very less okay most of the light will be absorbed if you are looking at vegetation then it will have different spectral curve if you are looking at the barren terrain as we were talking in terms of uh, uh, the image from greater enough of Kutch, we were having different uh, colors okay. and that is dependent on the the absorption capability or the reflectant capability of the object. So, this is these are the curves which are standard curves which are available for example, vegetation in different wave bands you will have different reflectance which you will be able to pick up and for example, dry soil you will have different curves for example, for water you will not be able to look at or identify the water body in rest of the wavelengths. Okay. So, you will have to look if you are interested in looking at the water body you will have to look at within the, the spectrum which is more or less in, in the range of visible light. So, the spectral curves which are been shown here the intensity of the light emitted or reflected by the objects at different wavelengths, which is termed as spectral response curves. So, what we are looking here are the spectral response curves of different material. This spectral response curves are as a function of wavelengths. Okay. So, at different wavelengths you will have different. For example, for water you would not be able to identify because everything is getting absorbed until this point okay. and this is the, the range which we are having of visible band 0.4 to 0.7 here. Okay. So, if you have to look at the vegetation for example, the green line here then you will be most prominent observations you can make when you are looking at the band 4. So, this is like 1 to 7 we are having different bands which are available in multi spectral data if you are having. Okay. So, depending on what and 
information you need, you may select the bands and try to extract the, the information which is useful for the user. Now, going further, this is what I was talking about that different material will have different, uh, uh, for example, the physical composition will be different, surface texture will be different, color and moisture content, it depends on that and that will be responsible in emitting the, the light. Okay. Now, for example, this is very quickly, I will just go through, but not uh, part, but it is important that more than 70 percent of earth crust is made up of elements like oxygen and silicon. Now, in order of abundance, if you take silicates okay, are the most abundant rock forming minerals, because we are, why we are talking this here, because uh, we are talking about the earth surface okay. An earth surface is comprised of uh, this material, either in the form of rocks or in form of the sediments or in form of a soil. Okay. So, the most abundant is your silicates, which are the, the most abundant rock forming minerals, followed by oxides, carbonates, phosphates and sulphates. And all these minerals will have different spectral curves, because the composition is different, they have different textural characteristics, or in terms of if we talk about the crystal forms or crystal structures. So, depending on that, they will have different spectral curves. So, just for an example, we have silicate minerals, okay. you have non silicate minerals here, which are having different composition. So, if you look at further, this is what you can look at the silicate structures here, you have uh, silicate structures and then you are having the composition here of different minerals. And what are the basic cleavage forms and all that. Okay. Now, for example, here uh, the clay, if you uh, incident your light on a clay, then it may appear slightly darker, because it has an capability of uh, absorbing water and in the dry conditions, you may have better reflectance. Then again, it, uh, what we talk about that different type of crystal forms in different minerals. And if you aggregate those minerals, then you may have like, like you will finally, having uh, rocks. Okay. So, rocks are, are comprised of different minerals. So, for example, if you take granite, okay, then you have the major constituents of the granites are feldspar, quartz, biotite and plagioclase feldspar. Now, all these three or the four minerals, which you, you will mostly come across in the granite are having different crystal forms. And of course, the, the composition is also different. Okay. So, all this will reflect a uh, different um, uh, amount of light. Okay. So, for example, quartz you will have uh, a good reflectance, because of its color and all that. And other minerals like biotite will appear darker. So, spectral features of mineralogical constitutions, if you look at, then we have it depends again on what we have discussed upon the composition, crystal form, internal atomic structures. Okay. So, if you look at the, the amount of emission of in terms of the percentage and if you look at uh, on the y axis, you have the, the wavelengths. So, at different wavelengths, you will have different reflectance. So, the quartz, albite, muscovite, augite, hornblende and olivine will have very good reflectance or emission of light between this range as between around 6.5. So, maybe you can go up to 10. So, you are moving into the, the near infrared and all that, but further you will have an complete absorption. Okay. So, it will not yield anything. So, if you are choosing any band uh, in from the multispectral data and if you are looking at and this region, then you may not be able to identify any minerals. Okay. So, you need to be careful which bend you, you are interested in. So, this is the, the area of absorption, you will not be able to see much. 
further in terms of uh, the thermal infrared region, if you take the electromagnetic spectrum is characterized by spectral features exhibited by many rock forming min group mineral groups. For example, silicate, carbonates, oxides, phosphates, sulphates, nitrites and so on. So, particle size and packing can produce changes in emission spectra in terms of relative depth of absorption, but not in the position of the spectral band. For example, the carbonates shows a prominent absorption feature at 7 micrometer. Sulphates displace bands near 9 and 16. Phosphates also have fundamental feature near 9.25 to 10.3. And features in oxides usually occupy the same range as that of silicon SiO2 or so 8 to 12. And the nitrates have spectral features, these are the prominent spectral features which we are talking about at 7.2 and nitrates at 8 and 11.8. So, this minerals are having very typical spectral features which are exhibited at different wavelengths. Now, for example, spectral features of, uh, of some of these minerals, if you look at that what we have been discussing, that you will have an around 7 that is carbonates 8 to 11.8 that what we discussed in the previous slide, then you have nitrates, then you are having. So, this is the the absorption which you will come across. The so, spectral uh, spectra of rocks, if you look at then different rock types which uh, you should refer at, that we have three different type of rocks, uh, igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic. You will have typical spectra. Now, major regions of electromagnetic spectrum if you look at. So, for us the visible light, okay, this region will be extremely important that is from 0.4 to 0.7 micrometer. So, the fundamental principle in remote sensing further if you look at this image which has been shown three images. So, these are these are all like uh, multi spectral images. So, you have a green, red and near infrared bands of the same area. So, this is from the Gangetic Plains into Gangetic Plains. Now, all three are not giving the similar information ok, though they are been taken from the of, uh, of from the same area or the images are of the same area, but they are not giving the same information, because the reflectance uh, will vary from band to band. So, for example, the green if you look at, so this is a set of multi spectral image in green red in near infrared bands of the same area indicating that various features may appear differently in different spectral bands. Okay. So, in, in different spectral bands you will have different features which are enhanced or they are subdued, because they will not be able to give the good reflectance. Okay. So, therefore, using information from one or more wavelengths, it may be possible to differentiate between different type of objects. For example, dry soil wet soil, vegetation and map their distribution on the ground. So, in the last one here, you can see that the channels are coming out very prom prominently, okay. whereas here you are not able to pick up this, okay. but in few locations you are able to pick up near, near infrared, you are able to pick up the more detailed area here whereas here you are not able to. 
So, you may use in combination of this bends when you are doing or using the multi spectral images, then you can enhance the features which you require or interested in and then accordingly you can extract the information. So, if you look at that what we would be talking of that we have like if you take the 7 colors here. Okay. So, if you keep on adding those images either in the red band or the green band or the violet band or the blue band, then you will be able to enhance the, the different features which are which which in which you are interested in actually. Now, again uh, as we will talking about the, the reflectance and the absorption of the light, the photographic films versus the visible radiation if you take. Okay. So, photographic film is sensitive to visible radiation and also to the radiation of longer as well as shorter wavelengths. Okay. So, we have uh, starting from gamma, we are having shorter wavelengths and we are moving towards further towards the visible light within longer wavelengths. Okay. So, this films are sensitive to visible radiation that is point, point from point 0.4 to point 0.7 and also to the radiation of longer and shorter wavelengths than the visible light. Okay. So, on the either side they will be sensitive if you take the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. The best used film to get the black and white photographs with greater details of the terrain are the panchromatic films. Okay. These are the photograph photographic film sensitive to light of all colors. Okay. So, this is very important. So, panchromatic data or panchromatic film is been used to have the complete spectrum okay, in terms of because they are sensitive to light of all colors including red. Okay. So, panchromatic refers to black and white imageries or photos exposed by all visible light. So, this we have been talking about, we have talked about in detail about the, the electromagnetic spectrum. So, for us this area is extremely important, okay, which is been used for the conventional aerial photography. So, this is an again simple uh, diagram which explains about the, the spectral. So, if you take why this is very much important again is the human eyes are only sensitive to particular type of electromagnetic radiation, which we call visible radiation. However, it comprises light with different colors or bands of different wavelength. So, it is having point, point, point 0.4 to point 0.7. Okay. So, we are having this is the, the range which we are talking about. This is so human eyes are sensitive to a particular type of electromagnet that is a visible radiation. So, when uh, this is passed through a prism, then you will have uh, uh, the light spectrum, okay, which is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. So, wavelength ranging from 0.4 to 0.5 microns appears blue, 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 green, 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 red. So, this is the range which you will see mostly in the visible light spectrum. So, radiation with shorter wavelengths than 0.4 are termed as ultraviolet, then greater than 0.7 microns are infrared. So, you are having this less than this is ultraviolet and greater than 0 0.7 
is your infrared. So, in terms of uh, energy of electromagnetic radiation, which is inversely proportional to the wavelengths, okay, the red light with the longest wavelength has least energy. So, this is another important point which you can remember. Now, looking at with the understanding that the about the panchromatic data and all that, let us look at what is the main difference between the normal film and the panchromatic film. So, here to your left and to your right, what we are having the so left is your ordinary picture taken by ordinary film, normal film and then another one is your panchromatic film. So, nowadays mostly we use the panchromatic film. Now, if you look at the difference, you will be able to make out that the panchromatic photo or the photo which was been taken by panchromatic film has greater details as compared to the ordinary film, because they are the ordinary film will not be sensitive to all colors of visible spectrum. So, it will appear dark for some of the colors. Okay. So, ordinary film is mainly sensitive to violet and blue, very sensitive to yellow and green and not at all sensitive to red. So, any material or an object or a body is with red color on the earth surface will appear dark in that film when it has been the data is collected. Thus, a picture taken with ordinary film violet and blue are the only reflected color lights, whereas other colors make no impression and therefore, show black on the screen. So, if you are having for example, it says that violet and blue are the only reflected colors. Okay. So, if you are having the violet, they are reflected no problem, but red appears dark here on the screen. The result with the pan are very different. A picture with panchromatic film you can get the correct color values okay, in varying shades from gray, because the pan images or the pan photographs are sensitive to all colored light. So, not only the violet and blue, but red, green, orange, yellow and all other colors color light in is correctly reflected. So, if you look at this is what is the spectrum which has been given. Okay. So, the ordinary films are only sensitive to violet, indigo and blue, whereas this has a complete range. Okay. So, left photo is from your ordinary film, it shows navy blue as light color. Basically, one expects to see yellow and red printed as light shade, lighter shades okay, of gray, but this appears darker than the navy blue. Whereas, pan note the difference in color values reproduction, navy blue appears dark, red medium gray and yellow light gray. Okay. This is which has been seen yellow over here, okay, which is light green, whereas here it appears dark here and here also the red is a lighter shade of gray, but here you are having the red is completely dark. Hence, with this uh, understanding, the it was it was been uh, it is well understood that the panchromatic images or the photographs taken are much better because it gives a wide range of shades, which we require to identify different features or objects on the earth surface. So, this is an example of the pan data, which has been taken from the aerial 
platform and this one is another one is from the high resolution image. Okay. So, one is aerial photograph another is the high resolution satellite imagery. So, in our course we will be using both we will be uh, having look on the aerial photographs not only uh, pan chromatic of course, the pan chromatic is also we can get color. So, we will use both the pan data as well as the, the high resolution satellite images also. So, I will stop here and we will continue in the next lecture.